hey, 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 it's What's Cooking. And unlike yesterday, when we ventured out to Blade 1936 up in Oceanside, um, today I'm cooking and I'm doing quite a few little projects here. But um, I do want to comment on the safety procedures and how amazing it is and was last night to um, go into Blade 1936 in Oceanside and have a complete tour of all of the safety protocols that they have put in place. Um, honestly, they, they've done a brilliant, brilliant job, built glass um, screens, glass walls. Um, you place your order at the door, and by the time you go in and sit down at a beautiful, like 10 foot um, apart tables, they already have your drink order and almost your food on your table. So it's not that they're trying to rush you, it's just, it's a super efficient way of um, doing things. And there's no salt and pepper on the table. There's no Parmesan cheese or crushed red peppers or even silverware. Everything, there's no cloth napkins, no cloth tablecloths. I mean, they are doing just a phenomenal job of bringing you your um, service setup. And if you do need crushed red pepper or Parmesan cheese, it comes in little packets. So um, I just applaud them. They're doing a great job. Dinner was phenomenal and I can't wait um, to go to the plot and to Candor and to Piazza 1909 and to Chicha and to all Mr. A's like Mill Fleur everywhere. I just can't wait. Um, plus I'll not be cooking as much. So I have a ton of onions and I have to make French onion soup. Um, I know I've done it before, but um, one of the things that I find as a trick is do not take the root off the onion, right? And so I'm gonna have five, yeah, five onions that I need to slice up. So I'll be doing that. And then uh, butter, olive oil, and some salt and pepper. And they're gonna saute until they get really, really, really um, cooked. Then I'm gonna put them in the oven at 400 degrees with the lid ajar, not quite on. And I'm gonna roast them in the oven for an hour and I'm gonna check them and stir them 30 minutes in, okay? Then I'm going to add um, chicken stock because that's all I have, and um, some crushed red pepper, some parsley, some bay leaf, and I'm just gonna let it cook long and slow for quite a long time. So I've got that going, and I'm not crying yet, John Maddie. So far it's working. I was just talking to John Maddie, and by the way, he owns a beautiful, amazing jewelry store and is one of the most honest and talented jewelers I've ever met in my life. So if ever you are in the mood or in the market, he, I highly, 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 highly recommend him. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. Then um, in this pan over here, I am going, I already have garlic, olive oil, and um, onion in this pan. And to this pan, I'm going to add, I'm making stuffed peppers because I had two peppers left from um, last week. Last week, I know, they're still good. And um, I wanted to do something with them, so I have ground pork right here and ground beef, and I'm gonna saute those together. Uh, let's give that a little bit of time. So Phil Fredrickson has been in Oceanside at our listing all day. He left the house at 7.30 this morning, and it has had multiple, multiple, multiple showings today. Um, and what we have to do as listing agents um, at a listing, it's just unbelievable, and particularly a vacant one. So he's been there all day with cleaning materials, masks, gloves, and booties for everybody um, that is allowed to enter the property after they complete um, the PED form, PED, whatever that means. Um, it's just that OSHA, OSHA um, has very, very strict guidelines for us, and we are adhering to them and we are doing absolutely everything we can to keep our properties and our um, community safe and healthy. And, and I just am so grateful that he, that we're a team actually. I'm so happy we're a team um, in both our life and as well as in the work because he's able to go do that and I was able to do a bunch of marketing stuff today and other things that needed to get done for other clients. So divide and conquer. And now I'm gonna whip up food. So I haven't had food myself since last night. I'm trying to fast. 
I don't know if any of you do that, but um, I kind of got off of my intermittent fasting um, and I gained the COVID, you know, the COVID weight. So I'm back to fasting. I haven't had anything and I'm dying of hunger. So I can't wait to, <laughs> to eat soon. But um, I have to wait for Philip. And then the other cool thing, hang on one second. Let me just do this real quick. All right. Let me wash my paws. Speaking of paws, Mackenzie is right there, just hoping to go outside and look for lizards, her favorite pastime on the planet. All right, so um, with this, let me get it stirring. We're going to get this ground up, and then I'm going to add tomato paste. I already have it open and ready to roll, and some tomato sauce, and some parsley. Actually, I'll put the parsley in right now. Some parsley. Pepper, crushed red pepper, make it spicy. I put a lot in that actually. Woohoo! It's gonna be spicy. And some black pepper. And I'm gonna put garlic um, or onion salt. So a little onion salt. Alright. Get that rocking and rolling. I have my bay leaf out and cayenne pepper and parsley and pepper that will go in the onion uh, stuff so for the French onion soup. So anyway, I'm going to let that cook up. And then once it does, I will add um, the tomato sauce. I will fill these little peppers with the meat. I only have two peppers, so just for the two of us. And uh, our neighbor, um, Jan, isn't here right now, so I'm not going to be able to feed her, which is kind of a bummer. But I'm happy that she was able to visit her family, which she really wanted to do. So that is awesome. Okay, so I'm still not crying, but my little doodad fell off. The whole trick to this is not cutting yourself, right? Oh, I'm not good about that. I should not be allowed to play with sharp objects, technically. Uh, I always end up doing something stupid with sharp things. Anyway, I won't take that all the way down. So I leave the root on. Leave the root. Notice, no crying still. And that was one whole onion down. I think it's pretty awesome. I read about it somewhere, and it seems to work. Right? And, oh, look what else we have. A bunch of loquats picked. So I've been threatening to make a loquat jam. I'm kind of terrified about it, but uh, there they are. They all have to be like de-seeded and oh, I don't know, it's going to be a long process. And the other cool thing, oh, Mackenzie's barking and she's got a weird toy that sounds like a cow in the front yard or the front room. I think our neighbor Joe must be out with his dog and boy, they do not get along. I'm telling you. All right, so here we go. And this is the orange cello. It got bottled yesterday. So isn't that cool and cute? I love that. Mackenzie, Mackenzie, no barking. I forgot to put her in her little timeout room. Sorry about that. She doesn't like to go in there anyway. And then another cool thing happened. So our friends and work associate, Jerry Linney and his partner, Kurt, um, have these really, really cool glasses. And they're actually called Z-W-I-L-L-I-N-G. Zwilling is the brand, okay? And if you've ever had them, they are so cool. So today, four of them arrive in the mail from Jerry and Kurt. So basically, I don't know if you can see that, they're insulated. So when you have ice in your glass, it doesn't sweat anywhere. Isn't that cool? And so kind and so amazing and gracious and just over and over and over again, um, how neat it was to have this be delivered today and such a cool surprise. So thank you, Kurt and Jerry. You guys are awesome. <clears throat> Super awesome. All right. So <clears throat> I think, you know, people are starting to get out, right? Um, 
a lot of things opening up and we just have to be super, super conscientious. Um, today, the, I sit with the advisory council of Scripps uh, La Jolla Hospital and John called today just to kind of chat with me and let me know that one of the messages that's really important to get out to people are number one, hospitals are one of the cleanest places you can be. Um, it is not unsafe to go to a hospital. They are not doing elective surgeries, like, you know, probably cosmetic surgeries and things like that. But if you're hurting, and the example he gave me today for me to share is that there was somebody who had a really bad hip and the hip kept popping out and they were in major agony and they actually ended up in the emergency room at Scripps and it was like, hey, you need to have surgery. So if it's something that in two weeks is gonna get worse, you need to go to the hospital. So please don't be afraid. You know, they're opening up, they're opening up. But also another message that was given um, from the CEO of Scripps last night in an email was driving around over Labor Day, or Memorial Day weekend and just seeing so many people not wearing their masks, not wearing protective gear, out and about. Um, I heard it yesterday on a Zoom meeting. Um, my friend Jim Coleman, he owns an amazing insurance company in Del Mar. He said the same thing, you know, out and about, and you're seeing, you know, people out there not wearing masks and they're super close. Do we all want to get locked down again and be on detention? I sure don't. I want to be released from detention, okay? And it, it takes all of us, guys, you know, every one of us. Don't be embarrassed to wear a mask. You know, we have to do it. We have to play by the rules or else we, we're going to get screwed. And I think all of us will be really, really pissed off if that happens and things have to shut down again and we're not allowed to go anywhere. So just do your job. I don't care if you're 21 years old and you think this is an old person's um, illness, what if you carry this and you give it to your grandparents or your parents or your aunt or your uncle or somebody and you're responsible for hurting them? You know, this is kind of ridiculous. And last night at the restaurant, there were six young people and I, I'm not blaming young people. Please know that I love young people and old people and, you know, I'm young too. I'm only 39, right? But um, there were six people. They were three couples. I can guarantee you they are not roommates, they do not live together. They walked in with zero masks to the extent that the restaurant gave them masks and told them they can't walk through the restaurant unless they wear these masks. Once seated, they could take the mask off. And when they got ready to leave, they had to wear their mask. But they came out, hang out, let's have fun, let's go party at a restaurant, and who cares about anybody else? So, I mean, Luckily, the restaurant would not allow that. But, um, you know, I heard just a lot of stories about that and a lot of people um, out and about, and this is not over and it's still serious and we don't want our numbers to spike, okay? And Philip had a good point. There was some big flu or something a couple years ago, three or four years ago, I don't know what it was called, and he said it, it caused more harm to younger people where this is causing more harm in the older generations, right? And, um, you know, we're hearing from certain groups that, you know, this is just an old person's illness and it's, I'm not going to be affected. Well, I guarantee you that when the other thing happened a few years ago, people didn't say, oh, that only happens to the young, so we don't care. We all have to care, all right? We have to care. Um, so I'm on my soapbox as I slice onions and make French onion soup. Oh, don't forget Gruyere cheese is like key um, when you make French onion soup. And since this whole COVID thing happened, I even ordered like little, little gratins to make it with. It's way better than the ginormous bowl that I was serving it in before. So anyway, with that being said, everybody just needs to stay in the game. Do your job, wear your mask, wash your hands, don't touch your face, stay physically distant while staying socially connected, and I think we'll get through this, right? So in the meantime, um, I got a lot of work here to do still. I just want to wish everybody a very safe and happy um, Thursday, and we plan to go live from a lot of different restaurants showing you 
um, how everything is going out there. And uh, please feel free to share with us. I'd love to know what your experiences are too. Um, I know there's a lot of musicians still unable to work. Uh, Johnny Tar will be live at six o'clock tomorrow. Jay Rodriguez is gonna go live at five. That's why I'm doing this right now. Randy's live at four and I kind of scooted in in between them. And then Kitchens for Good today at 5.30. You can do a Zoom um, cooking show with Kitchens for Good and it's so awesome. They're, they're feeding so many people in our community that um, are in need of food. And every other Thursday at 5.30, they do a Zoom live where there's two or three different chefs cooking. Um, there's a mixologist that makes a cool drink and it's complimentary, but of course, any donation that you make is always, always welcome. Um, to, to, for them. And then yesterday, Chef Billy Butter of Surfside Deli got some more money sent to him and he was rolling through OB, Ocean Beach, and um, Point Loma, uh, helping and delivering beautiful, delicious, gourmet food for those uh, people who may need, you know, a hand up at the moment. And it's not anything to be embarrassed by. People have lost their income. So just reach out. Right? Reach out and help, reach out and ask, and uh, we're here to help, okay? In the meantime, physically distant while staying socially connected, all right? Ciao!